do some sort of call to action and show value, right? I think the biggest downfall is if you're just like, sign up for texts. They're like, well, like, what am I signing up for, right? So I think it's important to share what they're signing up for. Hey, you can expect to hear from me about X, Y, and Z once or twice a month. Um, so what they're, what they're signing up for. And then to your point, if you are going to do like social or other ways, like do a raffle, do a gift card, support a local business, like get people excited about it. So there's some incentive to that as well. Hey, Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui, and I am back with my co-host, Shelby Johnson. Today, we're interviewing the head of sales, Jennifer Hay, over at Simple Texting. You know, there's been a lot of new stuff in the news with like texting laws and how people can use it. There's a million CRMs and text platforms out there and like gurus that are teaching all these different services and ways to do it. And Jennifer reached out to us about some of the things that they do inside their company. And we thought it would be great to have her on here to kind of talk about the industry, how people should be using texting and what they should be looking out for or not. So Jennifer, how's it going? Good, good. How are you doing today, Aaron? We're doing good. Shelby, where are you calling in from too? Yeah, I'm from Charlotte. I'm, I'm coming. I'm excited about this one because texting is something that is top of mind for people who are, you know, tired of cold calling. Like texting is so interesting. And I'm really excited to hear about how you guys are helping real estate agents implement it into their marketing strategies. Yeah. Well, especially because email has, I mean, email still is awesome, but email has become this flooded thing. Like it's not uncommon to see somebody that has like a 500 unread emails, right? They've almost, they've almost filed like email bankruptcy where they've said like, all right, I'm going to stop checking that email account now, or I'm going to stop looking at that. Or they just assume so much of what they get is spam. But texting is this other thing that, um, I mean, we can't really avoid it yet. I don't think, I haven't seen as many people that have like 500 unread text, but the phone is also kind of this sacred place. So when we outbound text to people, we get this variation of, yes, thanks for reaching out. Let's chat to, I hate you to like, leave me alone to, I know even when people opt in for texting, they're still like, they still didn't really want to opt in. So, so Jennifer, so how long, uh, how long has simple texting been around? Yeah, great question. We have been around since 2010. We were actually founded, you mentioned email. So we were founded by email marketers. Um, they were in that space for a while, realized there was an area of opportunity on, on the texting side. So we've been in business for about um, 13 years. Uh, we actually just this week hit over 17,000 businesses that are, are using our platform for texting. All right. And how long do you think real estate agents have been using texting as marketing? And like, and or like, you know, now it's built into so many CRMs that are out there. Um, but has it, you know, people, how long have people been doing it? I mean, since we've been in business, real estate's been an, an industry vertical um, that we've specialized in. But I would say um, in the last couple of years, we've seen an increase in that. Currently, we have a little over 2,000 of those 17,000 customers that are in the real estate space. Now, we kind of see it in, in both uh, kind of two d different buckets when I'm thinking about it, right? You have your, your agents that are sending text messages to prospect leads, warm leads, maybe past clients as well to see if they're, you know, buying or selling. Um, but we also kind of have this internal use case. So like brokerages as well are using texting to send internal communications, to recruit agents, to let them know about onboarding. Hey, the office is going to be closed. We're having this event. So I did want to mention as well, we're, we're seeing kind of a, a, a expansion of the different ways that we're seeing realtors use um, texting. Yeah. I guess we even do it with our employees, right? Like, so now it gets easier when we're managing large teams, especially like our auction teams and our foreclosure company, right? So using systems and software out there for batch texting, because we've got 50 people that we need to have get the same text message. And they've kind of opted in in a different way by deciding to be, you know, a, a, an employer out there. So there was on your mm -hmm. guys' website, you have a bunch of like case studies and things that people should be doing using texting for, right? So you just talked about internal. You talked about like prospecting to existing clients. What are some of the other things that, that agents are commonly using texting for or the real estate offices should be using it for? Yeah, absolutely. So for our realtors that already have a pretty well-established website and or CRM, I would say that's where they first get started. 
Um, they're collecting the phone numbers already in a compliant way on their website, pushing that to a CRM, and then they can go ahead and start using texting that way. So if they're already collecting phone numbers, we're seeing them using drip campaigns. We call them auto responders, but same, same thing, right? Where you're putting them in really specific segmented lists. You know, this is a, a warm lead that's going to buy in the next four months in the North Palm Beach neighborhood, right? This is a lead that's probably going to buy in two years in the condo, you know, um, in Jupiter, for instance. So it's really nice because because you can just kind of plug and play, right? You can set up these drip campaigns so that you're always top of mind. You're always connecting um, with your clients. So that's one really good way we're seeing it. And then to take it kind of more into the open house event space, right? If you're having an open house, we have something, you've probably seen these on, you know, signs in front of the house, at flyers, right? Keywords or QR codes, text to get more information. You're driving by a house, text 123 Main Street, and then an automated text pops back from our platform with pictures. Hey, this is a 3-2 listed at this. Here are all of the um, you know, ins and outs of this listing. So keyword functionality is also um, a really nice one as well. And then finally, I'll mention too, like the one-on-one, -on -one, right? We always think of mass messaging. Hey, come join this open house or whatever the case is. But the one-on-one -on -one is nice as well. Once you've built that established relationship, to your point, everyone's texting, right? Nobody has time to hop on the phone and get on calls. Like phones are going to voicemails, but just nurturing and touching base with folks is really nice as well. Whether they're an existing customer and you're letting them know, hey, your appraisal is going to come through in three days. Your closing date's this. I'll meet you at this time, right? That one-on-one -on -one, um, or just touching base um, as well, even post-closing. Here's some market research. Here's what's happening in your neighborhood and, and that sort of thing. So it's a it's a wide variety of ways um, that we're seeing uh, realtors use use texting. How how is it different than a uh, CRM? You know, if I'm sitting here, I'm thinking like, oh, if I just set it up, I can do the QR code. I can do the the you know all of those follow ups. So like, what is the difference? Yeah, it's a great question. So a lot of times with the CRM, there are some limitations, right? Certainly you could maybe do some one-on-one -on -one messaging, but a lot of times CRMs don't also have the drip campaigns as well as the mass messaging. So the nice part about simple texting is you can do it all, right? And we can also integrate with CRMs. So um, that's just another thing to mention as well. Um, so you're able to do the one-on-one, -on -one, right? The really personalized messages, the keywords, but then you also can do the mass messaging. Um, so let's say you have a list of, you know, 500 warm leads that are interested in this particular neighborhood, condo, whatever the case is, then you can set them into a drip campaign. Um, and a lot of CRMs don't have that dynamic capability um, that our platform does. A quick word on our toolbox. We know it can be overwhelming thinking about all of the systems you want to build into your business. And that is why we ask guests to submit their favorite checklist, template, or tracker so you don't have to build from the ground up. Go to realestaterockstarsnetwork.com and click toolbox for your free access. Thanks so much. Yeah. So the, and some of the stuff you say on your site, right? So it's like warm up cold leads from your website, right? So somebody kind of registering, giving their phone number and saying, thanks for requesting more info. Like, Hey, we got your info. Let us know. Um, promoting property listings. Like, Hey, we just got this new listing in your area. The price reduction alert. Those are great ones. Like somebody that showed interest a while ago and then being able to go top of mind again, since people aren't always checking the MLS for updates on that same house that they were like, especially right now, like price updates are happening all the time uh, in a lot of different markets. Open house invites, I think are great. Uh, scheduling and confirming appointments. That's key. I, I mean, I think when I get a text message five minutes before a Zoom, right? Or like the day before, or like, you know, at and T's doing it when they're doing service at your house. Like those texting updates are pretty crucial uh, to help everybody accomplish everything. So I think that that's, um, that those are some great ideas. Uh, referral requests. I always love that, right? Like not being afraid to reach out to people and going, Hey, here's an update. And, and, you know, remember, because sometimes if someone has used you as an agent a long time ago, they're not thinking about that. When a friend says, Hey, I'm thinking about buying a house. They're not necessarily thinking, Oh, you're looking for referrals. Oh, Jennifer's super busy all the time. She'll be super busy. I'm sure that she doesn't need more work and just going, Hey, I would love to help some of your other people. So so a lot of those use cases make a lot of sense to me. Somebody registers, they say, you're allowed to communicate with me. You have some sort of a relationship with them, whether you met them at an open house or whether you did like a giveaway at an event where you're like, hey, right, give us your email and phone number and you can win one of these drawings and things like that. So there's ways that people collect that info. And I think right now, all the texting platforms out there, they give this quick way to say, if you hit stop, you automatically get you know added to the, the do not call. 
But what about people that are saying, you know, I get a text message all the time that says, hey, your listing expired. Have you thought about selling it? Or, hey, are you still the owner of this? We even have some of our software, you know, that, that, we're, that we're having people do outbound marketing that way to try to get leads. So when is it okay? When is it not? Knowing that we're not legal experts here. I'm sure you're not a legal expert in everything on it. But like, what is your understanding of when it's okay to cold text someone, if ever? Yeah, great, great question. And I appreciate it. We, we aren't legal experts, but certainly from a, from a best practices. Um, and it's funny you mentioned this because just yesterday I got a text from somebody. She said, hey, it's Nicole, no last name, no company. Are you still the owner at blah, blah, blah property address? I, am, I immediately deleted it, right? I don't know this person. I never opted in for her messages. Not quite sure how she got my phone number. And those are, those are the things we want to avoid. So, um, you know, cold texting, just buying a list of phone numbers is not going to fly with the carriers, right? The AT&Ts, Verizons, T-Mobiles of the world are, are going to shut that down. Um, so the, the big thing now around and, compliance and they had for a second there, so I mean, they're going to shut it down. Like as soon as you start texting, they're going to notice a certain amount of stops and then they're going to like block your number on all of their services or how do, how do those guys shut it down? If you start texting a mass list, that's a great question. So some folks might be able to fly under the radar again, not, not without giving legal advice, right? Not giving yeah. legal advice here, but you can. Some people fly under the radar. Clearly, I got a text yesterday from somebody I didn't know, right? So some folks will fly under the radar. But ultimately, if you get enough stops, right? If enough people text back the word stop, or even worse, there's a filter you've seen on your text where you can scroll to the right and report a spam. I don't know if either of you, Shelby or Aaron, have done that before. Um, it's called a, a spam report. If you get enough of those reports or you have a high enough percentage of people texting back the word stop, that's where it's going to be a red flag to the carriers and they would stop your future messages from going through. Um, and that's where the compliance piece of it is getting a little, little more strict. Now, the good part about it, if you don't want to take that risk, and I would suggest not taking that risk, right, is to go through the process of getting your texting number registered, right? So I'm sure you've heard like this 10 DLC registration, getting your number verified with the carriers. There's a couple different um, ways you might have heard of this out there in the industry, but that's really, really important because what you're showing to the carriers is like, hey, I am a legitimate business. Here's my EIN number. Here's my company. These are the types of messages I'm going to be sending. Um, you know, here's how I'm getting and collecting these phone numbers and they register your number. And so you're um, going to be much more successful in getting your messages through. Yeah. So the, so if you're registered, it can still get through, but, but for the most part, when we're receiving those text messages uh, from somebody that's, that's prospecting now, is there a certain way? Are there things that if they say it different or so I've heard, like if you're offering to buy instead of offering to sell, you know, it's okay. Or if you're doing different, like, and would you just, would you, would your personal advice be like, Hey, never cold text or is there, or is there a conversation that cancer or a reason that justifies it? Like even like texting a neighbor, like, Hey, do you, do you live next door to our listing? We're hearing this about it. Like, when is it okay to be a business and cold text somebody? Yeah. Great question. I would say if, if I'm if I'm putting a lawyer hat on, I would say don't cold text, right? Um, but taking that aside, if your next door neighbor, you're texting them one on one, that's a different level of texting than going and buying a list of two thousand numbers and just blasting them. Hey, are you looking to buy your house? So to your point, Aaron, to your point, Aaron, like the idea of hey, are you looking to buy your house and sell your house to just a huge list? That's going to be a, a a big no no, right? But I what I would suggest to you know, folks who are trying to implement texting is to start in a in the most compliant way, right? Getting your website up form put on your website, promoting keywords on your social accounts. When you're at open houses events, just collect those phone numbers in a compliant way. And then that way you're you're set up for success moving forward. Um, but you make a good point, right? Like you're you're pretty unlikely to get a spam report from your next door neighbor if you text him and say like, hey, I was walking in the neighborhood, saw that you, you know, you might be interested in selling, you will probably be okay there. Yeah. Can, can you expand just a little bit on what is a compliant way to collect? Because, you know, if I'm thinking I'm like, I'm doing an open house this weekend and I'm collecting. I don't even know if I'm compliant. What is that? What does that mean? Yeah, that's a great question. So when you're collecting their phone number, you are getting their consent to text them later on. So um, when you're at an open house, for instance, right, maybe you have a paper form, maybe you have your iPad. I'm not I'm not quite sure how everybody you know uses it now when you're at an open house. But when you collect those phone numbers, you'll just want some boilerplate language. 
you're, you're agreeing to receive calls and texts from this agent. Um, we actually have resources that makes it really easy. You can just like copy and paste our, our web sign up form, put it into a written format. Like I said, if you're going to use an iPad, um, you could embed it on your website as well. So that's going to be the best way to go about it is just to make sure you have the little legal. I'm sure you've seen this. Like you go, let's get out of the real estate space for a second. You, you're shopping in your favorite e-commerce store. You go to checkout. You're like, Hey, do you want to receive? text about upcoming 10% off, you know, our, our latest product, you check the little checkbox there and then they can text you. So a very similar process you would want to put into place just to make sure when you're collecting phone numbers, folks know you're collecting phone numbers so that you can shoot them a text later on. Makes sense. Um, so the, so when people are sending a text, right. And you said there's lots of different ways. So it's like, here's a QR code for a sign. What's the, like, what are some of the keys to like sending a good text message? like to actually get somebody to reply. Cause we talked about those seven or eight, you know, different things of like ways to text, Hey, there's an open house. Hey, there's a price drop. But is there certain things, certain tools and tactics people can use when sending a text that increase the likelihood for it to feel, I guess, feel personalized, feel like it's not a big spammy thing and uh, be interested in it. Yeah, for sure. So I would say first and foremost, make it personal. Use folks first names, make it personal to what they're interested in. If you're just sending a message to your same, let's say you have a database of 2000 numbers, and you're sending the same message to all 2000 people, you're not going to get anywhere with that, right? And that's why using the different lists and segments is really important. This is somebody who's interested in six months in this neighborhood. This is somebody who's interested in 12 months, right? Or this is, these are my sellers. These are my buyers, right? You really want to segment them. So when you're messaging them, you're messaging them valuable content. So I would say that's where it's really key to, to use personalization. We have custom fields, right? So you could say, hi, insert first name. Thanks for your interest in insert neighborhood, right? And you can make it really personal. So they're like, oh yeah, they remember I was browsing on their website or I was at this open house, right? So I'd say make it personal. Also where I see pitfalls, people send way too long of text messages. The benefit of a text is that it's short and sweet, right? You see these like novel long text messages, people glaze over after one or two sentences. So I would also say make it really short and sweet as well and concise. Um, and then the last thing I, you know, I've seen some good success in as well is don't necessarily make everything about open houses and price drops and real estate, right? Especially for past clients, kind of expand that a little bit when you're thinking about your touch points and making those connections. Hey, you bought a house in North Palm Beach. Here are the top five things to do this weekend, right? Maybe a Merry Christmas text. Like we have a lot of um, realtors that use it that way just to touch base with folks that are like, hey, that's that's great. They're top of mind for me. Um, to your point, like maybe you do a raffle on social to, to collect phone numbers and you text folks about a raffle supporting like a local restaurant. You're going to give out a gift card to a local restaurant. So I'd also challenge folks, you know, in terms of What's the best text? You know, personalize it, keep it short and sweet, make it valuable to what they need, but then also get creative. Um, cause if you're just sending, Hey, that here's this open house every month, like that, that gets dull and, and boring after a while. Right. Yeah. The, so is there a natural point to switch from like a text to a call? Like as people are having like the, the conversation or if the text is going good, do you just think just, just keep texting because if somebody's texting, they would rather communicate that way. I think if the text is going well, probably keep texting. But I would say if their texts are a little all over the place, it might be time to suggest a call, right? So let's say you're you're working with a buyer and they're all over, they're they're interested in a three two. Next, they're interested in a one bedroom condo, and now they're interested in this neighborhood and this neighborhood. And their texts are a little all over the place. Like that might be a good time to just say like, "Hey, I'd love to hop on a quick ten minute Zoom. Let's look at the MLS together. Let's look at the open listings together, and kind of make a, a plan of action, right?" So I would suggest you know it's going to be case by case, um, but you can kind of tell when folks are sending a lot of texts and they're a little bit all over the place, like maybe a quick call might be the way to go. And then honestly, like we just ask people, Hey, w like, would you prefer, like when I reach out to you, like, do you prefer text? Would you prefer a quick phone call? Both. Um, and I think most folks, they're probably going to say text, um, cause they're really busy and you can check your text even when you're like on a meeting. Um, but yeah, I think also just asking folks, Hey, you know, which is your preference is a great way to go as well. Real quick, as you likely know, the 2024 Real Estate Rockstars Mastermind is sold out. But if one of your preferred vendors is looking for marketing opportunities, we are looking for sponsors. We would love to get their name and business out to 80 highly motivated real estate agents from across the country. Know someone who'd be interested? Go to realestaterockstarsnetwork.com and shoot us a quick email for more information. Thanks so much. Back to the show. Yeah. 
So with your software, there's a bunch of software out there. There's a bunch of services out there. You guys represent a bunch of different kind of industries. Real estate is just one of them. And with yours or with any of them. So when somebody is picking a texting software, what are some features and differentiators that people should be thinking about when they're choosing them? Because there's like, there's integrations like Twilio, there's like Dialpad, there, there's all these that like people like build an API that then they can work inside, you know, follow up boss and other CRMs kind of by themselves. It sounds like yours might be a CRM all by itself. Um, you know, in, in one sense, the word. So what are features out there that people should be thinking about? Like, I love being able to text some, even the one-on-one -on -one texting, I love being able to type from a computer, right? Instead of my phone, it's just faster, just much faster, much quicker. And, you know, at times I'll have like my computer screen and my, you know, the phone system up on the side so I can just be texting, you know, through there and see them come in for faster responses. But features, what should people be thinking about? What's the difference between one software to another? Yeah, it's a great question. So, and you mentioned Twilio. So I'll kind of break it down between when you're looking at platforms, there's going to be two, two options, right? Twilio is going to be developer based. You're going to need a developer to utilize the API to build everything out. Whereas like the simple textings and others of the world, it's turnkey. You could get your account created, your number registered. I and mean, we have folks all different ages and demographics. They log in, they type their texts and push send. It's, it's a very easy to use. There's a user interface that's all set and ready to go. So I would say that's a big piece is if you don't have a developer on your team, definitely steer towards platforms that are already turnkey and, and set to go and have a friendly user interface. You make a good point as well, right? Folks, um, some people like the desktop version. Some people are really adamant about the mobile app, though. If you're on the go, they don't want to have to log onto their computer to type out text. Some, like you, Aaron, right, would prefer, right, because you can kind of visualize it and all of that. I'm the same way. I hate emailing from my phone. Like, I always like to have my laptop, right? Um, we offer both a desktop version as well as the mobile app. So I would say when folks are researching is to make sure whatever their preference is that that software offers both or one or the other. Um, and then I would also look for the all-in-one solution. So a lot of providers are really um, specialized, right? They only do mass messaging. Maybe they only do one-on-one. -on -one. There's a provider out there, they just do reviews. That's their, that's their bread and butter. They do review requests via text. Um, and I would suggest for folks who want to utilize everything, which would be, which would be the key, right? The one-on-one -on -one mass messaging is to look for a more generalized all-in-one solution. Um, and then the last piece I will mention is um, if integrations are important, uh, folks that do offer integration. So a very common integration for, for realtors is a contact sync, right? You have all of your phone numbers, you're already pushing to your CRM, you want those automatically pushed over to simple texting. We have integration capabilities that can do that. Um, so integrations would be another one I would look out for as well. All right. So and we've had that happen with some of our software too, with people that are preferring, you know, we've got a desktop version, but people are saying, well, do you have a mobile app for it yet? Which is for me was counterintuitive, but yes, they, they like that. And then what about if somebody calls the number, right? So the, so, so I know, I know that some businesses are like, Hey, you can buy 10 different messages to text from, um, but each of them are only set to be, a, most of them are set up to where they forward to a number. So if someone calls back on the text number, it doesn't necessarily ring inside the same software forwards to another phone uh, where someone can answer it, but you can only have so many, but if you have five text messages, you can't forward all five to the same phone, <laughs> at least on the ones that I've tested. So what happens if someone, they get to the point and they're like, Hey, I think this text is a little jumbled. I want to call now. Um, are you able to, are you able to sync your phone number, your text numbers to be the same as their phone or is it a forwarding system? How's that work? Yeah, we actually have both options. So, and actually a third option. So I'll kind of start with the most basic. We have some folks that are like, I want this to be a text only number. I don't want people to call me. Like, I just want this to be a one way mass message. I just want to send text and we can give you a text only number included with, with any option. Um, a lot of folks though, second route would be they already have a number that they're using for calling. We can text enable that number meaning we can add the texting capabilities. So you would keep everything as is with your calling capabilities. We would just add texting to that. So for the realtors out there that want both the call and the text, that would definitely be the way to go. Now I have a third bucket of folks who are like, I'm new, right? I don't, I don't have an existing number yet, but I do want all of these calls forwarded maybe over to my cell phone or forwarded to a landline. We do offer a call forwarding feature um, as well. So when I have conversations with folks, this is what I'm asking. At the end of the day, do you want it to be text only? Do you also want calls, right? What's your end goal? Also, do you have an established number yet or not? And then we can point you in one of those three buckets. Yeah. One of the things you said, so I've got a cell phone number, right? So I've got a cell phone right now. 
obviously, and I, I call and I text with it. <laughs> if I wanted to say, hey, I want to keep my cell phone number, but I'd like to be able to you know, use an app to text with it. Is that something you can do? You can tie it into a cell phone or does it have to be a, a, a landline or a different service? Unfortunately, you can't, regardless of which provider you go with, you can't text enable your personal cell phone for business texting. The reason being, if you did that, then you wouldn't be able to keep your texting for your personal reasons, right? You have so, to put it all through the app. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what, what I would suggest in that instance, if, if there's folks who are really all on their personal cell phone, that's where you could do the call forwarding to your personal cell phone. That's also where you could download the mobile app. So you're getting all your text um, on, on your mobile app. I will say another nice feature for folks who want to have maybe a little bit of work-life balance and boundaries, even though most realtors, I think, work all the time. So I don't know. I don't know if this is a selling feature or not, depending on who you're talking to. But we do have um, an away message. So if at like 10 p.m., they want to put an away message up that's like, hey, thanks for the text. I'll get back to you tomorrow morning. That's really a nice feature because on your personal cell phone, you you know, can't do that. Um, so I just wanted to throw all that feature as well. If again, you maybe on weekends or evenings, you want to put up that away message, it's, it's valuable. Yeah. This so the, and then we talked about <clears throat> list building a couple different ways, and maybe this is for both Shelby and Jennifer, is I'm trying to think of ways that people can build that text messaging. List, right. So it's like going to an open house, Register when you get here, getting their phone number. There's website forms where you're kind of trading some sort of an offering. I've seen people now like on Instagram and social say, hey, if you want more info about that, text me at this number. Um, can either of you guys think of other ways that our listeners could think about if they're like, all right, I want to use texting, but I don't have a text list yet. Like I was going to buy this list and start going, but like, but how else? I mean, I guess the other one of the, uh, the only other one I can think of off the top of my head is like sending a mailer, right? So you're sending a mailer and then in that mailer, you're saying, hey, text us your address or text us this as that next call to action because then they're in. Um, but what else? What are so, do you guys, Can you guys think of any other ways that people could go figure out how to get a bunch of text messages? That's all you, girl. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was going to let Shelby hop in. Um, so those are all the most po probably popular. I will say, though, maybe you're working with somebody who they haven't really been collecting phone numbers as much, and they've only been collecting email. You could also send out an email. I would do some sort of call to action like, hey, we're rolling out a new texting campaign. We're going to be sending out market updates monthly, newsletters about what's going on in the area, sign up to receive text messages. So you can email folks to, to ask for their permission. So that would be another valuable way if there's folks that are just emailing right now. And then I would also just mention too, you mentioned the mailers, but any type of signage that you have like in front of maybe a, a listing, a property listing that you have, you could put a keyword text house to this to sign up for updates. My biggest piece is whether you're going to do it on social, on mailers, on email, on signs in front, you know, I mean, we have people that have t-shirts. I walk through the PBI airport, there's like billboards of realtors, right? They could promote it there, right? All the places you can promote it is do some sort of call to action and show value, right? I think the biggest downfall is if you're to like sign up for texts, they're like, well, like, what am I signing up for? Right? So I think it's important to share what they're signing up for. Hey, you can expect to hear from me about X, Y, and Z once or twice a month. Um, so what they're, what they're signing up for. And then to your point, if you are going to do like social or other ways, like do a raffle, do a gift card, support a local business, like get people excited about it. So there's some incentive to that as well. Real quick, before we get back to the episode, two things I wanted to share. First, thank you so much for tuning in week after week. It really means the world to all of us. Second, we feel like we're just getting started. If you enjoy what we do here, please follow us on this app, share an episode, or give us a quick review. I promise we're working hard behind the scenes to make this show as good as possible now and into the future. Thanks, guys. Back to the show. Yeah. Shelby, any other ideas? Well, I've, I don't have any more ideas. I wanted to ask a question. So if there's any more ideas, from either of you before I switch directions. No, go ahead. Anything? Okay. So I'm listening to this and I'm excited. You know, I'm like, Hey, I'm an agent and I would love to implement this into my business, but I'm crazy busy. And all of these ideas are actually overwhelming me at this point because I want to do them all, but it's, I know it's going to be time, effort, energy. So like of the things that you listed before, you know, all of the different lists and segments are like, are those all pre-built out templates? Is there someone who's helping me on board? Like, what does that tactically look like? 
Yeah, great question. So everything's built out and ready for you to go. I mean, when we're talking about creating a web signup form, it's literally once you're in your account, clicking create web signup form, you select what fields you want to collect. Phone number obviously is required to get their phone number. But if you want another first name, last name, whatever else, and then you just copy and paste. I mean, it's it's that easy. Same with keyword. It's clicking a button, create a keyword. You type in the automated response that will go out when somebody texts in that keyword and you're you're ready to go. So from um from a time um standpoint, it's not going to take much time to implement these things. Um, but the great news is we do have a support team that's here seven days a week. The only day we're closed is, is Christmas. So outside of that, you know, there's there's somebody here to answer your questions. Depending on what plan you're on too, you would also have a dedicated account manager. So um, for some of our larger um, agents that send, you know, tens of thousands of messages a month, you'll also have a dedicated account manager that can strategize with you, um, help you create templates and all of that. I will just say generally though, texting, that's the beautiful part of it. You're not, you're not putting together this long email campaign with graphics and a subject line and multiple paragraphs or a social post that, you know, needs a reel and music and all of this stuff. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a short and sweet text and that's what makes it a little less intimidating. Yeah. So if somebody wants, so you guys are simple texting.com. Right. right. So if somebody wants to, you know, this has been really, really good. I think that, you know, I think a lot of the questions that I had about what's okay with texting and strategies, I think we gave our people a lot of different ideas. And for when they go to look for their own services, like definitely what to go look for the mobile app versus de- desktop, you know, what's built in. Is there a CRM? Are there some calls to action? We've all seen now text that you're, you know, we've all seen the calls to action somewhere online, everywhere else. Text this to this and then we will take some sort of an action. If somebody wants to go check you guys out, what's the best way that they can uh, find you? Do you have any like like to get a demo or free trials or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. Going to our website is going to be the easiest, simpletexting.com. From there, you'll see there's a free trial account option. So if you want to test this and it's not like the free trial where you put your credit card down and in two weeks, it'll charge you. No credit card, right? It truly, truly is a, a free trial. Um, So you can test some of these things. You could get a, cre- a keyword created. You could check out the website and form, see how we- easy it is without even committing, um, which is really nice. So you'll see when you go to simpletexting.com, there's the create free trial option. We also offer demos to anybody who wants a demo. Uh, uh, you know, my sales team is is open and ready to go. So um, if you want to book a demo, those are normally like 15 minutes. Again, short and sweet. Um, if you kind of want to get a feel and ask specific questions. And we have some great how-to videos and, and um, articles on there as well if you're more of a, a self-study person and, and don't want to do a demo. So a lot of great options if you go to go to our website. Um, and the last thing I'll just mention through the end of October, um, if you're you know tuning into this, we have an awesome promotion, 20% off your first month. If you use the, the promo code rockstar20, um, when you go you create a free account, push upgrade, you just plug in that promo code rockstar20 and you'll be set to go. Cool. So you guys heard it. So simple texting.com rockstar20. And then it sounds like if somebody has, you know, just questions in general, they can go to your website. There'll be someone they can chat with somebody on your, on one of your sales teams that, that could help them get started. Yeah, absolutely. We are, we are excited. Um, yeah, definitely want folks to feel like they can test it out first. If they have any questions We're we're happy to help show any of the features we've chatted about today. Uh, we are, we're here. Cool. Shelby, any final thoughts? No, I'm excited to go check it out. I'm going to, I'm going to go get a free trial. So <laughs> These free trials are a, they're a no brainer. Well, Jennifer, the thanks for coming on today to tell us about simple texting. Um, again, I, I, I learned a lot and I think there's a bunch of things that people should be considering. And I think anybody out there that is not using texting right now, other than like, I know that I know still a lot of agents are just texting from their phones. So people that aren't using it as a bigger marketing strategy, uh, when the business world is tougher right now, when transactions are down and we're fighting over a bigger, like we're fighting over a smaller piece of the pie, uh, texting would be an easy thing for somebody to consider jumping into kind of expand some of that market share. Like everybody needs to pivot and be adding new tools in their tool belt right now. And this seems like one that would be easy to, for people to understand and jump in. So uh, Shelby, thanks for coming on and joining me today as always. And thanks for holding down the fort. I love the interviews that I've been listening to lately that you've been doing. Thank you. Um, and Jennifer, thank you for joining us. Yeah, it was nice to chat with you both and I really appreciate it. Awesome. Real estate rock stars. Thanks for listening.